Hi, so in this video we're going to look at how we generate parts and in particular the part files to be 3D printed. So we're going to have a look at this this gear today. This is a gear I created. Uh, I didn't draw it all in detail and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so we go to our trusty on shape and we open up a new part file. Okay. Now the thing with Onshape is it allows you, if you look up here, there's this thing called the App Store, and it allows you to add extra features into your toolbar. So it's really quite useful. People have created these features, you can add them on for nothing. And if you look in here, I've added in Spur Gear, so SG. And all we do is we click on that, and as you can see, it gives us a number of options, and it immediately generates a basic gear. So this gear has 25 teeth uh, module, don't worry about that for the moment. Uh, pitch circle diameter, okay, so the effective diameter of this gear is 25 millimeters, and the pressure angle, again, something I wouldn't worry too much about, but it's basically the angle of the teeth here, okay, it's 20 degrees. And if we make really big gears or really small gears, we, we might want to change that, okay. So it's really quick, um, and then we can change any of these parameters. So uh, so let's say, actually, I want to I want a gear with 22 teeth on, uh, just 22 enter. Uh, it'll do a quick calculation. There we go. It's changed the number of teeth. Pitch circle diameter. Let's say actually, and I only want, uh, or actually, I want a 30 millimeter. Uh, it, it sometimes it can't always calculate it because it's too extreme. You might have to change the angle or muck about whatever. Okay, all right, all right. But it's given us a dedicated gear, and it, gears in particular are something that students seems to struggle with. So rather than pouring through catalogues and trying to order something from China that takes three months. Uh, it's, this is an ideal thing. You can, you should be able to design and create this part in in less than two hours. Okay, and and similarly, if we want it a bit deeper, this is only five millimeters deep. We can just change the depth on it as well, and it will just update like this. Okay, so this is a solid part file that we have here. Um, if you want to add fixtures into it, oh, you also we can automatically create a center hole if we want to. So there we go, it's put a hole in here. Let's say we only want that hole five millimeters. Just hit five and enter. Um, that was something else, why I'm thinking about it is because this is an American program, it, its standard settings are for uh, feet and inches. Okay, so if you go up to here, these three bars here, just a quick tip click workspace units. Okay, and you have the chance. I don't know why they work in feet and inches, but that's the Americans for you. Okay, and you can actually change your units in there. Okay, so if we've got this, we've got this part file on here. If we want to make it a bit prettier, well, let's let's say okay with that. So we green check button, um, and there we go. We have our we have our solid gear. Um, as 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 designers, we like like to make things attractive without. Uh, without sharp corners on it, so we can simply put a fillet on this if we want to. Um, let's say, let's say we want to put 0 0.5. And if I select this face, basically any edge touching this face will get a fillet on it. it takes a while to calculate because it's got a lot of fillets on it. So we'll see if it, if it does it. If it has tight corners, sometimes it doesn't like it. You might have to reduce the fillet size. So let's have a think about that. So this part now is a solid. Is a solid entity. There we go. We can see that it's uh, that it's done that. We we'll do the same the other side. So it's a solid entity. It has it has data on its volume, its mass, if you like, um, and that's what we need for the, for the three D printer to understand that it's not just a picture and it's not even a surface. It's a solid. It's a solid thing. So if we click OK with this, so how do we get this as uh, as a kind of file that a 3D printer will understand. Even a CNC machine will understand, but we'll look at that later. If we go to this part we've created down here now, we right click on that and we click export. And what we want, we want it as an STL file. This is the general file type uh, that 3D printers will understand. So the format here, it, it defaults to a parasolid, parasolid step, IGs, things like this. They're the kind of file types if you're taking into another CAD system, right? SolidWorks, if you want a dedicated SolidWorks file, Rhino, and everything. If you look down here, we see STL. STL stands for stereo lithography. Uh, it's it's stereo lithography is, was a really early way of making um, making solid parts, but it's stuck. Okay, so we click STL, 
just check down here, make sure that if you've made it in millimetres, that the units are millimetres, otherwise it could end up huge or tiny. Resolution, if we're 3D printing, I would generally go with fine. Okay. And the other thing is then, we can either download it as a file, or we can also download it and store a file in a new tab down here. Okay. So let's do that, just in case we ever lose our file, we can always keep that. Okay, so it just calculates that it's now converting it into an STL file type. Uh, what do we want to do? I'm going to save that. Okay, and as you can see down here, we now have we have this STL file, and we also have it up here in our downloads. Okay, yep. So again, we can uh, you know we can open the folder and save it anywhere we like. So then all you need to do from that is save it onto something like a memory stick um, and then come along and we can plug that into the 3D printer and the software will sort that out and it will make your part. Okay, so it's really good. If you want a quick part, all these small little parts, um, anything up to sort of an inch across is ideal for the 3D printer. Okay, so get designing and, uh, and have some fun.